Section 4.5b is about graphing linear equations. When linear equations are graphed, the resulting picture is a line. That's why they're called linear. Now a couple facts about uh, linear equations and the lines that they produce. When you have a linear equation that produces a line, the line is continuous, which means it has no breaks, no holes. It extends beyond the endpoints, so the lines uh, go off in both directions forever. It represents all the solutions of a linear equation. That means every single dot on that line represents a solution. And those ordered pairs, those solutions, they all make the equation true, which means they all work in the linear equation. Here we're going to graph a linear equation, x plus 2y equals 6. Now we know it's linear because it's in standard form, ax plus by equals c. It has an x, it has a y, they're not being multiplied, everything's good. There are actually two ways that you can graph this, and the first way that I'm going to show you in this example is by creating a list of ordered pairs and then putting those on the graph. The best way to get a list of ordered pairs is to isolate one of the variables, and typically we're going to isolate the y. So I'm going to start with x plus 2y equals 6, and I'm going to get the y alone. We'll subtract the x, do it from both sides. So 2y equals 6 minus x. Now the 2 is connected to the y with multiplication, so I will divide both sides by 2. But that means I've got to divide everything by 2. So y equals 6 divided by 2 is 3. And this can be written now as 1 half x, or you could write it as x over 2. So this is the new equation that I'm going to graph. It's easier to find ordered pairs when you isolate one of the letters, and typically the letter that we isolate is the y letter. So I'm going to make a table, x and y, and you can pick any x values you want. I love to pick 0. I think 0 is the easiest one. So we're going to try 0 here, 3 minus 1 half times 0. Well, 1 half times 0 is 0, and 3 minus 0 is 3. So when I plug a, a 0 in for x, I get a 3 for y. Now, when dealing with fractions, I often find it easy to cancel those fractions by picking numbers that will cancel with the denominator. So I wouldn't advise picking 1 here, because then you're going to have a fraction. I'm going to use 2. So 3 minus 1 half times 2. 2's will cancel, leaving me 3 minus 1, which is 2. So when I plug a 2 in, I get a 2. I'm going to do another one, because it's best to pick three ordered pairs if you can. I'm going to choose, I could choose 4, I could choose 6. Anything that's even here would work well. I'm going to do a negative 4, just to be crazy. So we'll cancel the 4 with the 2, leaving a 2. And minus and minus will end up with 3 plus 2. So then my y is going to equal 5. So when I plug a negative 4 in, I get a 5. Those are three ordered pairs that I can now graph. Now you may have three other ordered pairs, and you can find them exactly the same way, but those are the ones that I'm going to do. So 0, 3 is here, 2, 2 is right there, and the negative 4, 5 is right there. One of the benefits of graphing three points is they all three should line up, and you can see if you have the right line or not. And in this case, it looks pretty good, so I'm going to graph my line. Here's what my line looks like. It goes through all three points. And so this is the method of graphing a linear equation. Isolate one of the variables, typically the y. Once you do that, make a table of values, pick any x's you'd like, find three ordered pairs, and then graph them. Another way that you can graph linear equations is by using uh, these special points called the x-intercept and y-intercept. So let's take a look at those. The x-intercept is the point where the graph crosses the x-axis. You find it by plugging in a 0 for the y and then solving. Likewise, a y-intercept is where it crosses the y-axis, and you plug a 0 in for the x to solve for that. Now we're going to do some solving in the next slide, but I just want to—I want you to see um, what these look like here in this example. If you notice, this blue line touches the x-axis right there. This point is called the x-intercept. I'll abbreviate that. And what is that point? Well, it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. It's 6, 0. So we would say the x-intercept is the point 6, 0, or we would also say the x-intercept is just 6. It's assumed that if we say x-intercept, the y value is always going to be a 0 for the x-intercept. Now let's go look at the y-intercept. 
here's where the blue line crosses the y-axis. So we say that this is the y-intercept. And the ordered pair is 0, 1, 2, 3. 0, 3. We can also just say the y-intercept is 3. Because when you have a y-intercept, you assume the x value is always 0. So using these two special points, the x-intercept and the y-intercept, you can also graph lines. Let's take a look at an example doing that. Here's our equation, 3x plus 2y equals 9, and we're going to use the x and y-intercept. Now one of the potential benefits is there's really no need to isolate one of the letters. So to find the x-intercept, I'm going to put a 0 for the y. Let's do that. 2 times 0 is 0, so this really is a 3x equals 9. Divide by 3, and you get x equals 3. Now, because I put a 0 in for the y, that means my ordered pair is 3, 0. That is my x-intercept, so that's the first part of this. Now, the y-intercept is where I plug a 0 in for the x, so I'll do that now. 3 times 0 is 0, so this is really a 2y equals 9, solving for y by dividing both sides by 2, and so y equals 9 halves. Ordered pair then is a 0 for the x and a 9 halves for the y. So that is considered my y-intercept. Let's graph those two points. 3, 0 is right here. Now 9 halves is 4 and a half. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 and a halves right there. So that's what my graph looks like. The potential negative is there's only two points to deal with, and if I mess one of them up, I won't know if um, this is the right line or not, but the, the gains are you only have to do two points and you don't have to isolate the y. So this is another potential way that you can graph a linear equation and you're going to have to make a choice whether you want to do a table of values or use the x and y intercept. Here we're asked to graph this linear equation. I'm going to do both methods, the x and y intercept and the table of values. That way you can pick the one that you like and, and pay more attention to that. So for the x-intercept, I'm going to plug a 0 in for the y. So 1 half times 0 minus x equals 1. That's just going to be a 0. So you end up with negative x equals 1. Divide both sides by the negative 1. And you end up with x equals negative 1. So my ordered pair is negative 1, and I plugged a 0 in for x, so negative 1, 0. That's um, one of my points. Specifically, it's my x-intercept. The y-intercept, I'll plug a 0 in for the x, so 1 half y minus 0 equals 1. So this is really 1 half y equals 1. To get rid of a 1 half, I multiply both sides by 2. So we'll cancel that, we'll end up with y equals 2. Which means the ordered pair is 0 for x and a 2 for y, and there's my y-intercept. Now, I would now go ahead and graph those, but I'm going to show you now the second method, the other way, of using a table of values. I want to start by getting the y alone, so I'm going to add x to both sides. So 1 half y equals x, no, excuse me, 1 plus x. Getting rid of the fraction, I multiply everything by 2. So we'll cancel there. y equals 2 plus 2x. So this is the, uh, the new equation that I'm going to use, and I'm going to make a table of values using that equation. Pick any x's you want. So here are the three x values that I chose. I plugged a 0 in for x. 2 times 0 is 0, and so y equals 2. So when I plug a 0 in for the x, I got a 2. So there's one of my ordered pairs. I also plugged a 3 in. 3 times 2 is 6, plus 2 is, is 8. So when I plugged a 3 in, I got an 8. And I also plugged a negative 2 in. 2 plus negative 4 is negative 2. So those are the three ordered pairs that I got when I isolated the y. I don't care which method you use. They both work. Now, if we did everything right, all five of these points should end up uh, on the graph. Now, actually, if you look, 0, 2 happened in both of them. So we're actually going to have four points. Negative 1, 0 is here. 0, 2 is right there. 3, 8 is right here. And then negative 2, negative 2. So they all line up. So this is what my graph looks like. Um, bottom line is you pick whichever way works for you. X and Y intercept or isolate the y into a table of values and graph 
the linear equation. Here we're asked to graph y equals negative 2, and this is actually very simple. If you remember from previous slides, whenever you have y equals a number, that's going to create a horizontal line. It's always going to be a horizontal line whenever there's no x value. It's just what it is. Now the horizontal line is going to be right here at negative 2. So you're going to travel on the y-axis down 2 because it's negative 2, and you're going to create a horizontal line. And that's all there is to graph it. There's no points you have to create, no x and y intercept. y equals a number is a horizontal line. There it is, and you're done.